Hello again, everyone! Welcome to a new Let's Play! Let's head back to Britannia for Ultima 6. Origin presents a Lord British production. Upon your world, five seasons have passed since your triumphant homecoming from Britannia. You've traded the Avatar's life of peril and adventure for the lonely serenity of a world at peace, but television supermen cannot take the place of friends who died at your side. But at least you still have your picture of a zebra centaur with punk rocker hair. Interesting side note, the uh, time on the VCR uh, reflects the time on your computer when you start the game. Um, and another fun thing is that if you watch for the uh, talking head guy to pop up again... Come on. Yeah, we saw the intestines already. We saw the shaving. Yeah, the little picture in the upper right-hand corner changes every time. And it's random. It's pretty cool. I, I really like how what they did with the uh, introduction here. It is definitely one of the uh, better introductions to any game. Plus, it has awesome music. <clears throat> I'm using the uh, Roland MT Audi MT32 audio. Uh, I vastly prefer that to uh, um, the AdLib sound. Although the AdLib sound is still pretty good. Uh, the clock change, by the way. Love what they. I love how they did that. Outside, a chill wind rises. And you've got the uh, cover art for Ultima 5. We started a tradition. Mm, floor pizza. And in moments, the storm is upon you. Tongues of lightning lash the sky, conducting an unceasing crescendo of thunder. In a cataclysm of sound and light, a bolt of searing blue fire strikes the earth. Lightning among the stones! Is this a sign from distant Britannia? Hey, the door's open now. You bolt from your house, stumbling, running blind in the storm, completely forgetting to lock your door once again. Into the forest, down the path, through the rain, to the stone. Near the stones, a smell of damp, blasted earth hangs in the air. In a frozen moment of lightning-struck daylight, you glimpse a tiny obsidian stone in the midst of the circle. Wondering, you pick it up. And from the heart of the stones, a softly glowing door ascends in silence. Exultant memories wash over you as you clutch the stone. When last you saw an orb such as this, it was cast down by Lord British to banish the tyrant Blackthorn. But your joy soon gives way to apprehension. The gate to Britannia has always been blue, as blue as the morning sky. Abruptly, the portal quivers and begins to sink into the ground. Its crimson light wanes. Desperation makes the decision an easy one. And oh my god, I have no shadow. Ultima 6 the False Prophet. Alright, we have actual mouse control for once. Uh, introduction, create a character, transfer a character, acknowledgements, and journey onward. We will be uh, doing all of these... Well, we'll we will, I mean, I should say, we will be transferring the character, uh, but I'm going to go through the character creation just so you can see it. Uh, acknowledgements is, of course, the credits, which you saw in the uh, introductory visit video that I already posted. And uh, journey onward will load your single save game. Alright, let's go ahead and create a character. By what name shalt thou be called? Now, I'll be uh, importing Min, who's female, so let's go ahead and go through the crea creation for a male character. Ald. Male. And you can actually change the gender here. Um, you got some portrait options. Uh, this is the standard uh, um, blonde-haired avatar that you'll see for the most of the rest of the games and he is the this is actually um, the same uh, art that's on the cover of the game I believe uh, you got a guy with uh, luxurious Sean Cassidy style hair black guy with uh, an onk what would 
that be? A headband? That's not a headband. That's a... I don't know. Whatever. And an older gentleman. And a guy with a chain coif. And a dwarf! Uh, we'll choose this one for now. I'm not a big fan of the portraits in this game. Or I mean, some of them are pretty nice, but a lot of them, not so much. Welcome, O oh Seeker. A lonely stroll along an unfamiliar path, an unfamiliar forest path, brings you upon a curious gypsy wagon, its exotic colors dappled in the summer shade. I really like what they did with this, too. A woman's voice rings out with friendship, beckoning you into... into across the wagon's threshold. Yes. Into and across the wagon's threshold. And as it happens, into another life. At last thou hast come to fulfill thy destiny, the gypsy says. She smiles as if in great relief. Sit before me now, and I shall pour the light of virtue into the shadows of thy future. On a wooden table, eight bottles stand, a rainbow of bubbling liquids. Hey, I thought you were supposed to use tarot cards. It does amuse me that it changes each time. Behold the virtues of the Avatar, the woman says. Let us begin the casting. Thou hast spent thy life in charitable and righteous work. Thine uncle the innkeeper lies ill and asks thee to take over his tavern. Dost thou sacrifice thy life of purity to aid thy kin, or decline and follow the call of spirituality? Yeah, uh, so not doing B. Thou art sworn to protect thy lord at any cost, yet thou knowest he hath committed a crime. Authorities ask thee of the affair. Dost thou break thine oath by honestly speaking, or uphold honor by silently keeping thine oath? Um... First of all, it's pretty stupid of me to, uh, swear to protect someone at any cost. If he commits a crime, he should do the time. I will definitely, uh, uh break my oath. Because that's, that's also justice there. Thou hast been sent to secure a needed treaty with a distant lord. Thy host is agreeable to thy proposal, but insults thy country at dinner. Dost thou valiantly bear the slurs, or justly rise and demand an apology? I will justly rise and demand an apology. <clears throat> Justice! The captain of the king's guard asks that one among thee visit a hospital to cheer the children with tales of valiant personal deeds. Dost thou show thy compassion and play the braggart, or humbly let another go? <laughs> I will definitely show compassion and be a braggart. It's for the kids! Gotta do it for the kids. After twenty years, thou hast found the slayer of thy best friends. The villain proves to be a man who provides the sole support for a young girl. Dost thou spare him in compassion for the child, or slay him in the name of justice? Uh, this is actually a tough one. Um, I'm not really even sure how I would react in person. Um, I, I do consider compassion and justice to be my primary virtues, at least as, you know, according to Ultima Virtues. Um, I think I'll go with Justice. Thee and thy friends are valiant but penniless warriors. Thou both, s thou both set forth to slay a mighty dragon. Thy friend dost think he slew it, but the killing blow is thine. Dost thou honestly claim the reward, sacrifice, or sacrifice the gold for the sake of thy friendship? Um, well, if he honestly thinks he slew it, then I, I, I don't mind sacrificing for that. That's, that's fine. I mean, obviously, if he's a friend, he's going to share the gold with me anyway. I mean, I would. If we both fought the dragon together. During a pitched battle, thou dost see a fellow desert his post, endangering many. As he flees, he is set upon by several enemies. Dost thou justly let him fight alone? or risk the sacrifice of thine own life to aid him. I would actually probably uh, um, risk my life to aid him, but I'm going to go with justice for this one. The path of the Avatar lies beneath thy feet, where the old, the gypsy intones. With a mysterious smile, she passes you the flask of shimmering liquids. Drink of these waters and go forth among our people, who shall receive thee in joy. 
Mmm, Mountain Dew. As you drink from the flask, vertigo overwhelms you. A soothing mist obscures the gypsy's face, and you sink without fear into an untroubled sleep. You wake in a different time upon another world's shore. Though the Avatar's quests bring you both triumph and tragedy, never do you stray from the path of the Eight Virtues. The sagas of Ultima Six, uh, Ultima Four, and Ultima Five chronicle your perilous travels, and your name and your deeds are written forever among Britannia's legends. Finally, tempered by your struggles against the enemies of virtue, you are proven ready to answer the epic challenge of Ultima Six. Dazed, you emerge from the portal to find yourself standing on a desolate plain. Nearby rests a massive, rune-struck altar shrouded in moonlit fog. At first, the plain is still. Then, a hundred voices raise a slow, death-like song, drawing closer and closer with each passing moment. You are seized by an urge to run. Yeah, this isn't good. But you have no place to go. Before you can offer a protest to the creatures who surround you, scaly claws grasp your body. With unearthly strength, the monsters bind you to the altar stone. Kneeling, the hordes sway and chant as a stately winged nightmare steps forward. The leader unwraps a velvet-covered brass-bound book and recites from it in a formal stilted tongue. Shouts and jeers explode from the masses as the priest slams shut the book. In his hand, a malignant dagger drips with moonlight. You close your eyes. A dying scream, certainly your own, curdles the air. Cat calls. The dagger. A scur... Uh, a scream. Death. Pandemonium. Shrieks of rage. Of terror. From the inevitable... An impossibility emerges. You are still alive. Silent red light fills the darkness. There is the wooden clack of a crossbow, and a violet-fletched rose blooms in the priest's barren forehead. Ah, oh, not you guys again. I thought I got rid of you in the last game. Friendly faces vault from a newborn moon gate. While a rain of quarrels holds the furious mob at bay, the Knight Dupre's swor sword flashes twice in the darkness, slicing away your bonds. I said sword. Quickly, old friend, to the gate! Accompanied by the swordsman Shimino and a grinning, crossbow wielding Iolo the Bard, Dupre thrusts a spare sword into your hand. Snatching the fallen priest's book, Iolo dives into the redness with Shimino at his heels. The howling throng surges forward all of one terrible mind. The gate wanes rapidly as you and Dupre charge through. But not rapidly enough. From the mob's vanguard, three of the, the abominations scramble for, toward the gate. Driven by fury, the creatures hurl their bodies into the portal's last hand span of light. And the game starts in combat. Wow, I don't think I've seen the uh, gargoyles start over there. Alright, well, uh, I'm going to quit to DOS, since we're not actually going to be playing with Ald. Okay, now since we're going to import uh, um, Min from the previous game, um, we actually need to uh, go through the install process again, which is good, you'll see the options. Uh, we will install to hard disk. Install to which hard disk? C. And we've got some uh, uh, graphics mode options. I'm totally going to play CGA. Yeah. Now. VGA, MCGA, 256 color. Do you have a Microsoft compatible mouse? Yes, I do. Okay, the only two that I know of that work um, are AdLib and Roland. Uh, I do not know what the correct settings are for um, in DOSBox for Creative Music System, Dan Tandy 1000, or Co uh, Kovac Soundmaster, or Innovation. Um, AdLib is the default install, uh, so if you get it through um, GOG, that's what it 
is uh, um, using, and that's why it'll sound a bit different um, when I play it versus if you've purchased it. Uh, I am going for Roland MT32 audio. It is, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I like the uh, ad lib music for this game. It's pretty good, but the Roland is just so much better. Yes, that's correct. Now we have the option of start a new character and save the above information. Any current character will be lost, or save the above information and keep your current character. So you could always change your settings and keep your current character, but we are, of course, going to be deleting ours. Generating new character information. Okay. Ultima 6. And, of course, we'll be skipping the introduction this time. See? Roland MT32 audio. So good. Alright, let's go ahead and transfer character. Um, you need to have the save file from uh, um, Ultima 5 or Ultima 4 uh, at the root of the folder that you've designated as your C drive and DOS box. Um, which I find interesting because I'm not sure how they expect you to be able to do the import your character. I, I didn't see anything instructing you to do that in the uh, uh, GOG instructions. I have these games already, but I bought them through GOG. I, I like to support it. I mean, it wasn't very expensive, so... Um, now, you can change your name, which I'm actually going to do, because we have more space in this game. And we can change our sex, but I uh, don't need to. Um, go ahead and continue. As you can see, um, I did boost up my experience a bit, just to get me over to uh, level 5, with the amount that I had. Since it drops off the uh, uh, first digit, um, well, actually, the last digit, um, it would have only put me at level 4, and yeah. If I'd really thought about it, I would have ground some more in Ultima 5, but I really didn't want to. <laughs> I like combat in this game quite a bit more. Let's go ahead and continue. Alright, so again, you can change your gender here. Um, let's go ahead and look at the portraits. Uh, this is oddly some sort of samurai woman. Um, this tends to be, I, I think, the uh, one of the more popular portraits. Uh, she just kind of looks weird. I think that's pretty bad, really. Um, big helmet, no hair, nothing like that. Um, just another odd expression. And this is the one that I'll be going with. Not sure, I, I think this one might be the more po most popular of the female ones, but uh, I could be wrong. Alright, we're going to skip through that again, because we don't need to see it. And now we're actually going to... You stupid... Gargoyles, don't be over there. Curses. Alright, now... <clears throat> some user interface, I mean, some interface uh, um, tutorialing. Uh, that is attack, which you can do with the A. That's cast a spell, which you can do with C. Uh, talk, which you can do with T. Look, uh, L. Uh, G for get. Uh, I, I believe D for drop. Uh, I think this is push and pull, but I'm not sure what the difference is uh, in the keyboard command. I'll have to look that up. Um, might be move or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look it up. That's rest, R. Um, B for begin or break off combat. See the uh, date here. Uh, the winds are from the north. And we've got our party here. Elmandretta, Dupre, Shumino, and Iolo. And we can actually uh, um, get into each of their inventories by clicking on their uh, icon here. And we can also get back to the list by clicking on that or that. We can view our um, portrait and our statistics. As you can see, I've got 150 health, 60 magic. Uh, Dupre has 90 health, no magic. Uh, Shimino's got 9 magic, though, which is kind of nice. And Iolo's got 8 magic. 
Alright, now, one other thing that I like to do... Um, you can change their... That they, they will attack automatically, but to be honest, I don't really like that. Uh, I like being able to control them. Go with command. Command. Now, obviously, uh, front and rear mean, you know, just go up and attack. Rear means stay back and use a ranged weapon. Um... I'm not exactly sure what f what they'll actually do under flank attack. I assume they'll try to go around to the other side or something like that. Uh, I do not know exactly what they do with Berserk. Retreat obviously means run away. I do not know what, it, what exactly they'll do with Assault. And I'll put them on command. Alright. And I might change them at some, you know, for some battles and stuff like that, but uh, to be honest, I generally like being able to control them. Have them do exactly what I want them to. And Shimino's got two weapons, so he'll attack twice, and Iolo misses. Oh, he lightly wounded the gargoyle, at least. Ooh, heavily wounded. It's always good. And it'll remember the last person that you attacked. Unfortunately, it doesn't remember it per person. Which is a little annoying. Now, I think you can also use the mouse. Yeah. But I'm better with the keyboard. Now, of course, this will also make combat go a bit faster, uh, slower. So let's actually put them on. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the front. Front and rear. Let's see exactly what they'll do this way. Ah, I took some damage. How dare you? Yeah, see, they're wandering around a bit more than I'd really like. I don't know why exactly they're doing that. That's one of the reasons why I like to command them myself. But again, that will also slow combat down quite a bit. Oh, there we go. Now we can break off combat. And the music changes. Let's go see what this guy had. <clears throat> the leather helm, that's it? That's just... Crap. What they have is completely random. Ooh! Nice! Scale mail! I'm using the look command, as you can see. Uh, club and a leather helm. Alright, I am very disappointed that I did not get a boomerang. Um, there's a very good reason why I want to get a boomerang. I'm gonna put these on. Just click on them and they'll equip them. You can wield two weapons. Let's see, everyone has helmet, they do. So I can go ahead and sell that at some point. Alright. Well, actually, um, before I talk to anyone here, I'm going to show you one uh, very interesting uh, um, thing. Most of you probably know about it, or many of you, I should say. Let's talk to Iolo. Uh, when you talk to someone who has a portrait, well, pretty much everyone should have a portrait. Um, if they have equipment, it'll show their equipment screen. And most people who have an equipment screen like this are recruitable. Not everyone, but uh, most people are. You see your old friend Iolo. Well, Elmandretta, do you need help with something? Or maybe you've got time for a story, eh? So, it is very helpful that they've put the uh, um, uh, keywords that you can uh, ask about in red. Can't click on them, though. And you have no... It doesn't keep track of them. You'll have to keep track of them yourself. Uh, I might actually end up getting out uh, like a notepad and a uh, pen just so that I can... Uh, um, make quick notes of uh, 
what I have and have not asked. Um, but Iolo has an <clears throat> a very interesting uh, feature. Hey, Iolo, what do you think of spam? Ask Jimino about that. No, seriously, what do you think of spam? Ask Jimino about that. No, come on, tell me what you think about spam. Ask Jimino about that. Ah, humbug. Secret Cheaters Menu! You can get items, set flags, view NPCs, edit party, edit player. Edit player, of course, would be uh, um, to edit your stats. I'm not going to do that. Um, I've got pretty awesome stats already. And uh, um, as with the previous games, leveling up and uh, meditating at a shrine will get you uh, more stats. Uh, edit party means you can specifically add people to your party. Uh, view NPCs. Uh, it's pretty interesting. You can actually scroll through all the uh, NPCs. Set flags, of course. You can set a flag to say whether you've talked to people, gotten cer certain items, that kind of thing. Um, the best thing is get items. Uh, you can create your own... You, you know, if you want a magic piece of magic armor, you can create it. Um, but more interesting, the the... Items is the the number of items is fixed, but the number that you use to create items is not. Um, so there is no maximum, and the higher you go, it starts moving upwards one uh, in terms of. Uh, I'm trying to think of exactly how to describe it. Basically, um, it will start moving the item statistics with relation to the item icon. So you can create an item, um, if you go up one, like, basically if you cycle through the numbers once, then each one shifts by one, so that uh, an item that you get with certain statistics actually is the, um, next, has the next item's uh, uh, icon. You can use that to create, say, a dagger that acts as a halberd. Pretty interesting. It's quite amusing. Uh, I might show that at some point. Um, I, I've got no immediate plans to do anything with the uh, cheaters menu, but I just thought I'd show that off before we actually get to the main game, which we will do in the next episode by talking to Lord British. So I shall see you then.